السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وسلم تسليما كثيرا. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, Ya Bani Adam, he's talking to his son of Adam, but especially the Muslims, خُدُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدِهُ وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ خُدُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدٍ وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to, in modern terms we can say to come to the masjid looking good. To look good when we come to the masjid and to smell good when we come to the masjid and behave good when we come to the masjid. Now, looking good may be misinterpreted that according to my own interpretation that I can wear whatever I want, I can put the perfume that I want, I can behave however I want. But this is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means because He says, He's ordering us, the son of Adam, and the Muslims in particular, because we are the ones who come to the masjid, to look good. So when we look, when we look good in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's based on his own definition of looking good. Now this is more for the women than the men. And no, nobody is targeting women here, but because we are approaching Eid and we have had cases where women think that they can wear whatever they want and look as good as they think that they should look good and wear whatever perfume that they want we see it appropriate that we address this issue now before Sunday Eid time so looking good for the brothers and the sisters and even the children it is the definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the women Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the women by ordering the Prophet to order his wives and daughters and the women of Islam, Mu'minat, to wear what? To wear the jilbab. So there is a dress code for women prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sheikh Hassan Sabri, Imam Hassan Sabri spoke about this in detail in one of, one of the khutbas that he gave a few weeks ago, where he explained what the jilbab means. Now the jilbab is not only for the masjid, the jilbab is everywhere that the woman, she's supposed to wear it, she's supposed to dress appropriately everywhere that there are foreign men around her, even inside her house. Foreign men, and I did explain this before, don't include, the father is not foreign, the uncle is not the blood uncle, the blood, uh, uh, the, the blood brother, etc. They are not foreign to her. But everyone else is foreign and therefore she has to wear the jilbab in front of those men, even inside her house. So if she's supposed to wear this or dress this way inside her house, it means more appropriately obviously and more importantly that she's supposed to wear this outside her house, especially when she comes to the masjid. The other ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى It is more preferable for women to remain at home. No, this should not be misunderstood that we lock up women and never let them outside the house. Or that should, they should stay in their house and, you know, for, the, for, for their entirety of their lives. No, this is not the meaning. But when she steps out of, the, of, out of her house, out of her sanctuary, women, they need to dress appropriately, look good appropriately according to the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not according to her own whims and or own desires. Now this message is for the brothers, whether this is your wife, mother, sister, daughter, if you allow her to step outside her house, she will be committing sin and you will be committing sin. And anyone who looks at her outside will be committing sin. Let me ask you a question. 
Have we been deprived or have we lost all sense of jealousy in our lives that it is okay for us to have our women step out, out outside our houses for every single vulture out there, human vultures I'm talking about, to look at her and lust for her? Have we lost this, the jealousy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept this for us. And we should not accept it for ourselves. There is a dress code that we should abide by. Men and women, but more importantly, the women. And by the way, just to let you know, the dress code is for your protection. Women, this dress code prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for your protection. It's not to deprive you of any freedom. If you want personal freedom, you can wear whatever you want inside your household. Again, as long as there are no foreign men. But to step outside your household and wear whatever you want, then we have issues. You have issues. Men who are outside and looking at you, they have issues. Now, when I say issues, committing sin. So when we talk about looking good, it's looking good within the boundaries of Islam. So Eid Day is not an excuse by all means. It is not an excuse for anyone to dress inappropriately and step outside her household. And even worse, to come to the masjid dressed inappropriately. So I encourage everyone, and I, I, I do strongly encourage, strenuously encourage everyone to abide by the dress code of Islam. Not only on Eid day, but especially on Eid day. This is not an occasion or an excuse for women to wear whatever they want and come to the masjid. And by the way, you know, the, the slogan that a lot of people use, dress to impress, I would agree to it if you're trying to impress Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am dressed appropriately according to your sharia, then great. But if you try to impress people, you're going to upset Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's going to make people displeased with you. Now when it comes to wearing the zina, to dressing appropriately, it also comes along with it that we smell appropriately. The hadith talks about, or let me, let me just tell you, the hadith in Imam, مثل الجليس الصالح والجليس السوئي كحامل المسك ونافق الكير فحامل المسك إما أن يحبيك وإما أن تبتعمل وإما أن تجد منه ريحا طيبة ونافق الكير إما أن يحرق ثيابك وإما أن تجد منه ريحا خبيثة The analogy here between smelling good and smelling bad whether it, you know, it's, it's like having a good friend or a friend who sells perfume this person you will find good smell in his store or on him or he will sell you good perfume that you can use and the other person on the other hand side who smells bad is the person and this is not to attack anyone in person by the way if you are in this profession but the other person is the one who who who's a blacksmith who goes, uh, works in, in iron you know napi fulkir the one who still uh, heats up the iron so he can mold it in different in different shapes that person either will burn your clothes or you will find a bad smell from him or if you touch anything in his store you are likely to have a bad smell so are we supposed to smell good when we come to the masjid? Definitely. But here's the thing. For men, you can wear perfume. For women, you cannot. It's haram. And it has been spoken about. We, we have talked about this in this masjid many times before. In our Hassan Sabri especially. It's haram for women to wear perfume and come to the masjid. It is haram. It's not my own opinion. How about eating garlic and eating onions before we come to the masjid? How about we eating spicy food or food that leaves bad odor? We should refrain from this. I mean, I had some occasions, unfortunately, where I stand in front of brothers who smoke during salah. Well, they don't smoke during salah, but I can smell the cigarettes or the cigarette smell on them during salah. And it's very bothersome. I mean, the least that we should do if we have to smoke a cigarette, this is how addicted we are to cigarettes, smoke a cigarette a few hours before you come to Salah, and you, you know, you should stop smoking cigarettes altogether, but if you are an addict, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you, but 
use some Tic Tac or use some perfume or use some, I don't know what available products out there that you can use for you to smell good when you come to the masjid. Because you're bothering other people, you're, you're, you're hurting them basically. And this is not right. And for the women, again, you're not allowed to wear perfume in the masjid. Even outside your household, you're not allowed to. It's haram. Looking good, smelling good, behaving good according to the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, they step out of their workplace and immediately come to the masjid. And some of them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them and, uh, you know, bless them and have mercy on them. They work outside and, you know, in the heat over here, you know, it's hot outside, it's humid outside. It causes us to sweat. So it would be quite nice for this person to go home first, take a shower, put on some clean clothes and come to the masjid. When you go visit someone that you deem important for whatever reason, you put on your best clothes, right? So shouldn't we put on our best, best clothes, the cleanest clothes, and smell the best that we can smell when we come and visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Isn't this more appropriate? So the bottom line is this. Looking good and smelling good is according to the guidelines and the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not according to our own definitions. And again, the reason should not be taken as an excuse to wear whatever we want and smell however we want and come to the masjid. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.